to get started, uh, let's type in um, collab on Google. Collab. So enter, and you can see here um, encyclopedia and also the main uh, Google Collab site. So collab.researchgoogle.com. So Collab is one of the Google uh, research product. Um, so it's more like if you know a Jupyter notebook, it's more like a cloud um, cloud based uh, uh, Jupyter uh, notebook dashboard. So you don't have to uh, manually um, install um, you know some libraries uh, on your Conda environment or on a local machine. It's just taken care of um, for you uh, at the you know call lab in, in the cloud. So it's a cloud-based, um, you know, Jupyter notebook, so to speak. Um, so and and it's free. And then one of the things that you need to um, access Colab is you need a Gmail account. And if you have a Gmail account, you need to, um, you know, have, um, a, you know, your Google Drive, and then you can create a, a Colab notebook something like you create a, a Jupyter notebook, okay? So what's collaboratory? So a collab, a collaboratory or collab in a short form, uh, you know, allows you to write and execute a uh, Python in your browser. And it has a zero configuration required. So if you were to do a Jupyter notebook, you need to configure some and install some package. But here, you just need to, um, you know, import some package. You don't have to configure, and then you also have access to GPU and easy sharing of your, your codes. Technically, you just um, share your collab code uh, with other, you know, collaborators, and 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 it's fairly straightforward. Um, so, how do you? Um, create a, a collab notebook so you need to go to your your drive your Google Drive and then create a new um, collabs you see Google collaboratory you just create a new and then um, it will give you an option to create a new notebook it's just uh, like a Jupyter notebook so you can rename your um, collab notebook um, for example test one and dot um, that's uh, a notebook um, um, suffix and then you have um, you know runtime and edit and file so you can save your file um, as a copy in your drive or in a github and things like that but basically now uh, we don't do fa fancy things here and also you have different cells so this is when you click this you add um, a cell that's um, executable so you write a quote for example import numpy then you can execute this code it will import this package and also you have a text um, a text um, cell where you can for example let me just move this app and then you can for example write um, import um, commented package so you can execute this then um, it will just um, consider it as a text it will not um, oh, because it's import it's considering it as um, as um, I will let me just make it a, a human readable a sentence so that it will consider it oh did I let me just add a, a cell which is all right so we can I can um, change the font type to bold and what have you let me just tell it actually import package and then this is a text so so because uh, this this cell was um, added as a, a code cell so that it's assuming it as a you can also delete a cell so let's delete that 
So this is a text. Um, you can write anything, any text about this code, and you can also add um, a code cell. So technically, it's uh, it's more like a Jupyter notebook, uh, but a cloud um, hosted uh, environment. And the advantage is, you know, you don't have to um, run, uh, you don't have to, you know, configure some some package, and then uh, unlike a Jupyter notebook. Uh, we have discussed uh, Google Colab in the previous lecture, so let's discuss about what Google Earth Engine is. So first thing first, uh, let's uh, type in Earth Engine. So Google Earth Engine. So Google Earth Engine is a, a cloud um, platform um, um, by Google, which um, is used to analyze um, and store a large volume of um, Earth observation data or geospatial data. And so this is the website um, um, of the Earth Engine or the Google Earth Engine um, site. And you need to have um, uh, access to this uh, account. Uh, you need to um, sign up to create an Earth Engine account, uh, mostly um, free for uh, research um, uh, and educational and nonprofit purpose. So you can request um, access for, uh, for a Google Earth Engine account. Once you have access, uh, you can access um, a large uh, volume of Earth observation data in the platform. Uh, you have you know, climate and weather data, um, you know, temperature, uh, and satellite image, including uh, Landsat, uh, Sentinel, you know, MODIS, and other geospatial, uh, you know, data, including crop type, land cover, and uh, nighttime light. And there's uh, more than more than uh, uh, more than that. Uh, there's a large volume of data. These are just only a sample subset of what you have on the Google Earth Engine data library. And the other thing in the Earth Engine library is um, the, the platform. So there's mainly a code editor for the JavaScript um, uh, API. So if you click the code editor, that's what you find here. So this is a playground. Um, you can write your, your code here, mainly a JavaScript. Um, um, you can write your JavaScript here and you can execute and run um, and um, you can see some of the output map result here in the map canvas. The other, um, so Earth Engine has two um, APIs. The first one is the JavaScript API, which is the main platform. And the other one is the Python um, API. So the Python API is run um, using um, a Jupyter Notebook and also um, a Colab, a Google Colab, which we have discussed in the previous lecture. So by uh, running a, a Google Colab, um, you can access the Earth Engine, um, the Earth Engine platform. So let's get started. So the first thing is, um, I hope you have a Gmail account. So. Uh, to access Earth Engine, you need uh, a Gmail account. That's the, the one thing that you need. And the other thing is, uh, when you submit a, a sign-up application, you need to specify that you need um, the account either for educational purpose or research purpose. Uh, it's non for non-commercial. So it might take um, 24 hour to 48 hour just for you to, to be approved. And especially if you have um, an email from a university it will, it will um, usually it, it's f pretty faster but if you have a gmail account um, uh, a personal gmail account it might take 24 hour to 48 hour to get approved uh, to access the earth engine uh, cloud competing platform uh, but anyway let me show you how you can uh, get started um, and have access to earth engine uh, for free uh, it's free it's provided by google but for mostly um, uh, research purpose and nonprofit and uh, you know educational purpose. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, Earth Engine. You type in Google Earth Engine, and then this is the main website. So you go to the Google Earth Engine main website. 
So you have, um, you know, some description, um, you know, about Googler's engine and uh, you can you can explore some, some of the things here. But the main thing is uh, you have you have data sets. If you're interested on data sets, you know, time lapse, case study, you know, different platforms and blog. But most importantly, for the Earth, the Earth Engine account sign up, this is where you go to the Earth Engine sign up. So you, you, you click here, sign up. And then it will just give you a form uh, and then um, it will just uh, you sign up your your form okay and then once you sign up uh, you know you uh, you would um, so you would uh, enter your email address full name affiliation where your country is and what you would like to accomplish with earth engine mostly for you know research or uh, you know educational purpose and you agree with the terms and then submit that's simply it. And then once you submit your sign up, um, you know, mostly it's it's about, um, you know, 24 hours uh, to 48 hours and they'll get back to you. And most likely, um, most of, most likely they'll approve you. Um, and then once you have access to the Earth Engine account, then you can access um, all the analytic platform, um, the <clears throat> cloud computing platform, and also you can access all of this, you know, big data, big geospatial, you know, earth science data, um, you know, various satellite data and also some um, geospatial, uh, geophysical data like the terrain and also some other land cover, night timeline and cropland and then some also socioeconomic data. There's a whole lot of data in the Earth Engine Data Archive. And the other thing is you you'll have access to the the um, analytic platform the cloud computing platform and then you can run your analysis um, on the cloud on the google cloud in this lecture uh, we'll talk about uh, how you can map uh, or classify uh, uh, an image a satellite image using uh, and supervised classification um, specifically a clustering uh, algorithm uh, on the Earth Engine API. Uh, let's get started. So um, we'll be using the Colab environment. Uh, so Colab is uh, more like a Jupyter notebook on the cloud hosted by Google. Uh, so to, to import uh, the Earth Engine, uh, so to import the Earth Engine uh, API, uh, you need to cast um, import EE to import Earth Engine. And also uh, you need to um, um, uh, cast EE authenticate that will authenticate the Earth Engine uh, library and um, next initialize the Earth Engine library by um, using EE initialize. So you need to um, you know execute uh, this um, chunk of code uh, to do um, to import uh, authenticate and initialize Earth Engine. Once you've done that uh, you um, execute this and when you execute you have a, you'll just get a link uh, you click that link. It will take you to your Gmail account um, and you'll have a, an authentication code. You copy that and then paste it here in the in the in the empty empty box here. And once you do that, uh, you'll successfully authorize the Earth Engine um, library. So assuming that you have already done so, uh, let's get started with the uh, real coding. So first, uh, we need to import. Um, we need to create a region of interest for our cl um, su unsupervised classification. Um, so I'll define uh, a region of interest, a region of interest, um, so I'll just create a, a variable called region and um, EE geometry and rectangle. So I'll be creating a rectangle. Um, and I'll just provide the uh, lot long information for this rectangle. And minus twenty six point two four and three four three one seven eight 
and the last one is 2609 so you close the bracket and next one is to load uh, the Landsat data so image um, ee image collection Landsat LC08 slash 08 C01 tier 1 uh, and we need to filter by dead it's just uh, adjust the caps here filter dead so this will filter the the time series uh, and I'll provide a start date and uh, an end date for this and January 1st and the end date would be um, December uh, 31st, 2017. And we'll do some um, sorting of cloud uh, metadata. Okay, so what this does is uh, based on cloud contamination, you will sort the data in ascending order, and then we'll select the, the first uh, from the, the series, which means is that uh, selecting the least cloud contamination or cloud free image. Okay, so this will uh, import the, the uh, Landsat data, and we have already created our region of interest. Um, and what we need to uh, do actually before we apply this is that we uh, need to apply um, filter by region of interest because this is a global data so we don't want to use the entire data set rather we want to um, use uh, you know the, the, the Landsat data that, that's over our study region in this case, the region uh, rectangle that we have already created. So we'll apply filter, filter bounds, uh, filter bounds, and uh, we, we just uh, provide region. Uh, that means the rectangle. And that will uh, actually uh, filter by, you know, spatially as well as um, temporally. And next, uh, we need to uh, make the training data. And we'll just uh, create a variable called training and image sample. And we'll open a curly bracket to input the, the parameters in our in our um, training generation. So what we're doing here is we use this rectangle and then generate random data points within this rectangle. And um, a few parameters uh, for this uh, um, for this uh, operation. So the first parameter is the the region that means the the polygon or study area that you have or you can say it, uh, area of interest or AOI so we have our rectangle here the region the region uh, parameter here and the next one is the scale actually and um, so the scale is 30 meter because we are using a Landsat data right
so uh, we'll close the bracket and that will be our function so uh, so numpixel is the total number of pixels that we'll be creating or randomly generating within this, within this rectangle is 5000 so this will create a randomly generated um, you know data points or training data sets um, the next one is actually to um, initiate the cluster model the unsupervised model so let's initiate uh, initiate the cluster so when we uh, when we apply clustering model we need to initiate the cluster and train it so we uh, create a variable called cluster and we apply e cluster So that's an Earth Engine built-in uh, clustering model. And then we have the Waker Chemins. We'll uh, call uh, the Waker Chemins. And then we'll provide um, generic 15 uh, as a parameter and then train. So our train is, we'll provide this training data, okay? We'll just copy that and paste it here. That means um, it's unsupervised classification. We don't we don't need to provide uh, an already no land cover classes, but we need data points, just simple data points um, or coordinate information, lot long information. Uh, so we need to provide that. And so the next step is actually to um, um, apply, you know, input um, the the cluster into our image, the landsat image, right? So next step is to, so cluster the inputs, in this case, the Landsat image using the train data, the train cluster. Okay, so this step will actually, um, apply the clustering model into the Landsat image. So we can say this as result, and then image is, mind you, we already created a Landsat image, that's what we are importing here. And our model, the clustering model is um, cluster here. So what this does is it will apply this model into the Landsat image, and the image will be converted into a classification. Even though it's not, uh, it's not, uh, a supervised classification it's unsupervised classification um, so it will categorize every pixel into homogeneous um, you know groups so we'll just um, copy this and paste and next step is actually we don't need this cell and we can execute that um, this entire script and to make sure that everything looks good so the next step is actually to, um, you know, display the cluster, um, the, the classification result that we already created. Um, so that will be, so we'll add the classification layer here. So add a uh, layer and then uh, result. So the result is the, um, the result of the clustering classification here. Actually, we'll clip it by a region, yeah, because we don't want to, you know, the entire data set, we just want to clip it by our study region. And then next, we need to create a random color, random visualizer. So, And next, uh, clusters. So this will create a map visualization of our crusting algorithm. Uh, we can execute that. And fantastic. 
So what this does is that it will classify the entire image within the study region into different, um, you know, classes um, that, you know, pixels that have similar characteristics will be categorized into a single class or it will just uh, uh, categorize pixels that have homogeneous characteristics. So um, based on their, their signature, a spectral signature, it will classify, you know, pixels into some groups, which is um, useful, um, especially with, before you do supervised classification. Um, and it helps you to um, refine your training data. And um, mind you now, we don't specifically uh, make a decision or know what this, uh, each of these classes are. But we know that you know this part of the green area has similar um, spectral signature um, as this one or this one, and the deep green areas have similar spectral signature. So, for example, if you want to capture training data manually, you can select all of these areas um, and um, you know input that into your supervised classification, and and so. Usually we do unsupervised classification or clustering algorithm um, as a pre-processing, uh, you know, before we do supervised classification. And in some situations we can we can use it independently. Uh, however, your your situation is um, this is how you can apply unsupervised classification uh, using a Landsat data uh, on the EarthGen uh, Python API using a Colab um, cloud hosted uh, environment. In this lecture, uh, I'll show you how you can apply a supervised machine learning uh, classification uh, using Python uh, EarthEngine API in a Google Colab environment. So Google Colab is um, a cloud-hosted uh, uh, Jupyter notebook. Uh, so we'll get started. So in this, um, in this session, uh, we'll see how we can convert this Landsat data um, into uh, classification using a CART uh, classification and regression, uh, you know, model, a machine learning uh, family. Um, so, um, you know, we'll uh, use a Python script for this. And so I'll show you how um, you can you can do this using a Landsat, uh, a Landsat imagery. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing um, you need to do is to um, import Erzingen. Um, you need these uh, three lines of code to import, uh, authenticate, and initialize Erzingen. So import uh, EE, uh, import Erzingen will import the Erzingen library. So Erzingen is um, um, uh, already um, loaded in, in the Google Colab um, uh, environment. So if you're running a Python, uh, uh, API um, and it's already installed. You just need to, to simply import and authenticate. E authenticate will authenticate um, your account with Google and uh, initialize Earth Engine. So you just if you click this, uh, you'll get an authentication uh, link. You click that uh, link and then you just um, it will take you to your Gmail account. Uh, you'll authenticate and um, authentication code will be generated for you. You copy that and paste it here. I've already done so. Uh, so, so let's get started to the main part of the script. So the first thing we need to do is create um, a region of interest. Uh, we just create a point in this case um, and we cast eegeometry.point. And next we'll import the Landsat data. Uh, we use um, a Landsat image collection. So we'll create an image and then use uh, the image collection and then provide uh, the um, provide the image uh, ID for the Landsat data. Here, uh, we can get this from the Googler's uh, library. And then next, uh, you know, because it's a, a long time series data, we only need to uh, focus on a certain time. In this case, we'll be using um, the entire 2017 data. Uh, next is to uh, filter by space. Um, uh, meaning that we need to uh, subset it by st our steady region, uh, in this case the ROI, which we already defined here. 
and instead of uh, accessing all the entire Landsat uh, global archive, we'll just filter it by our study region. And next uh, is, uh, you know, we have cloud contamination, obviously, because we're using optical data. Um, so, you know, sort cloud cover will give you, um, will, will sort uh, the entire data collection uh, in, in, in a sorting uh, ascending order or other. So, and applying first will give you the least cloud contamination or the, the least percentage of cloud contamination in this case, uh, um, a cloud free image technically, uh, or the best um, image without cloud cover. And we just uh, uh, create some visualization parameter for the Landsat data. Uh, we'll, use, we'll be using band four, three, and two of the Landsat uh, A data. Uh, we'll be defining the minimum and maximum values for visualization, okay? So now we've imported the, the Landsat data. Um, so to run a classification, the, there are two things you need to do in terms of training data. One, you may um, digitize manually um, as you go uh, and create a training data. Two, you can uh, import an already existing training data, which, which we'll be doing in this case. So I'll be uh, importing our uh, already existing uh, training data, uh, which I've already prepared, and define some uh, parameters here. Uh, I'll define the class, the property that I'll be using in the classification as label, and it's a class. Uh, and also the bands that I'll be using, uh, the Landsat bands that I'll be using in the classification. And select the different bands that I'll be using in the classification. Next, um, we have, uh, you know, training data points here. We have the Landsat data. It's just overlaying the points over the Landsat data and extracting those values. This is what we're doing here. And we define a few parameters here. The collection is our training data here. And then the label is the class here, uh, the, the property that we'll be using in the classification. And the spatial resolution of the, the data here is uh, 30 meter. And next step is to uh, split the data into two. Uh, as you know, um, when you run classification, you need to validate the data. So I uh, will be um, you know, saving 20% uh, of the data for validation. So that's what we're doing here. So we'll be using only 80% for the training the data. Next, uh, we'll be using um, uh, a CART classification, the Earth Engine built-in classification me method, smile CART, and then uh, input our training data as well as the, the Landsat bands, uh, the, the different bands that we're using here, and the labels, that means the class, which saves the training um, label or the land use land cover class. Once we train the model, uh, next step is actually to apply this model to the Landsat image, which is the input, um, the input uh, data is our Landsat image. So what it does is it will convert the, the Landsat image into a classification. This is the part that we will be using to, to do that. Um, so we'll, um, we have already, um, you know, um, created um, our, our classification, but let's just give it some you know, visualization. Um, so we have about five classes here, water, uh, urban area, forest, crop, and barn. Uh, we provide different colors for each of these classes. Um, before we do that, let's execute actually, um, you know, each of this, you know, codes, uh, so that we'll have the classification uh, set properly. So we execute the training part, and then we execute the classification here. And finally, uh, so this is a, a folium package uh, which helps us to import, uh, you know, visualization, uh, and this is the function that does that. And in addition, we'll we need to add the the classification over here, uh, which is uh, classified, and then we'll provide the the color palette which you already defined, um, which the layer is called classification. Let's execute this part, which uh, will give us the land both the Landsat data and also the classification result, okay? So this is the classification, and then this is our Landsat image. So we, we, ch we change it or converted this Landsat image into this classification, okay? So that's what we did here. So, so literally what we have here is uh, five land cover classes based on our training data and converted the Landsat image into a classification or land use land cover map. As you can see here, this is forested area. 
Uh, this is, you know, cropland and water, buddy. And this is the urban area, uh, most of the neighborhoods in, in, in the Bay Area, the urban developments. And, and also some, you know, gray area barren. Uh, and th that's that's how uh, you you know that's how you can see it in in the land side image. If you just zoom in in the land side image, you can see that you know the urban classes are red. We have just uh, properly classified this, and also some of the water bodies, um, as you can see here, blue, and also the forested area over here, it's just green. So overall, our classification looks good, and so this is how you implement a supervised classification. Uh, in this case, cart. Uh, model um, and um, using a Python API in the Earth Engine cloud computing uh, platform. So in this lecture, uh, uh, we'll be um, using a Landsat data uh, and we'll convert that into a land use land cover map. Uh, using a supervised classification uh, on the Earth Engine uh, Python API. We'll be using a, a, a Colab. Um, a Google Colab is a, a Jupyter Notebook uh, hosted on the cloud. Uh, it's a cloud hosted uh, Jupyter Notebook, so to speak, um, and um, um, hosted by Google. So we'll be using a Python API and Earth Engine, uh, Earth Engine, uh, Earth Engine cloud computing platform. Um, so we'll be using a Landsat data and random first uh, supervised classification. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. Um, so first thing first is um, let's uh, start uh, to um, uh, import the Earth Engine Python API. So mind you, uh, we're using uh, Google uh, Colab. Uh, so Google Colab by default um, uh, uh, has the Earth Engine uh, API. So what you need is just uh, import EE, which is import Earth Engine. And you also need to authenticate uh, Earth Engine. EE Authenticate will do that. And um, initialize Earth Engine. Um, you click that and then uh, will generate your authentication code and then um, successfully authenticate that. Once you uh, uh, do that, um, um, let's create a, a region of interest for our study region. And this will um, be achieved by creating ROI and EE geometry point, and that's a lot long information. Um, we'll import Landsat data um, and filter it by uh, region of interest and also by date here. And we'll also sort the cloud um, uh, cloud cover, uh, and then just from sort cloud cover and first will will give us the best cloud free image. And then we'll create the, the color composite for uh, visualizing the Landsat A data here. And so instead of creating a training data, we'll import uh, an already uh, uh, existing uh, training data. And we'll use that and we'll just create some label and um, select the different bands, the Landsat bands that we'll be using in our classification. Uh, next step is to um, actually import the data and generate um, so the input here is the the um, so the input here is the Landsat uh, image with the selected bands here. So that's our input here. So we'll um, um, we'll uh, we'll call that uh, input and also uh, our training data which we already imported here. Uh, so technically we're overlaying the the training points over the Landsat data. And next step is uh, we'll split the data into 20% and 80% and we'll put the 20% uh, for validation later uh, and that 80% uh, data we'll be using for training uh, training set. And next step is to actually create the random force classification model. Uh, we'll be uh, using EE classifier from the Earth Engine data, um, uh, the Earth Engine built-in algorithms and um, smile random first. Uh, uh, will be the our random first model and then we'll train the the 20 the 80 percent data we said uh, we'll use that and our label is the class here and the different bands that we'll be using in the classification are the the Landsat bands uh, here and next up is the to actually we have the model now we need to apply uh, the model to our Landsat image so that we'll convert the Landsat image into 
a classification or a land use land cover map. That's what we, we are doing here. And next is to, uh, we need to visualize the land cover classification. So we're just creating a, um, a visualization parameter here. Uh, we have five classes and we have water, urban, forest, uh, crop and barn. We'll uh, create um, for each of these uh, uh, classes, we'll create a color ramp. And then finally, um, we'll um, uh, import the foliam package and create this function to display our classification. But before we do that, let's execute um, our code um, so that we have um, the classification, uh, the training and the classification, and also uh, creating the visualization. And we execute this part of the code. Um, we'll visualize the, the classified image here, as you can see. And then we just uh, import the color palette we created. And because we have um, five, uh, we have uh, four classes starting from zero. Uh, we'll have to define those for our visualization and the, the uh, random force classified image is classification as uh, the name and also we'll display the landsat um, layer uh, here in addition so we just execute that and so as you can see here uh, this is our um, just uh, let's drag this um, so so we have here our layer menu. So we have the Landsat image here. This is the Landsat image we used uh, to, to make the classification. And this is our, um, our classification uh, map uh, here, as you can see. So we have used a, a random forest uh, classification algorithm to convert this Landsat image into a classification. And as you can see, uh, you know, most of the urban areas are red and as you can see here, they're matching uh, with, with the Landsat image and some of this area, the forested area, uh, is matching with our classification um, and, 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 and the cropland areas as well. Um, so, and also the water bodies here. So you, you can see that our classification visually, um, you know, visually um, uh, looks good and uh, overall, that's how you um, apply random forest uh, supervised classification using the Landsat data uh, on the Earth Engine Python API uh, and uh, Collab um, cloud-hosted uh, Jupyter Notebook environment.